Hello, welcome to this week's edition of This Racing Life, coming to you from Salisbury, home to the Group 3 Sovereign Stakes. Salisbury's two-day meeting in August forms the highlight of their calendar and that Group 3 Sovereign Stakes. Uh, shortly, I'll be out talking to Jeremy Martin, manager and clerk of the course here, about his memories of the Sovereign Stakes and also finding out what makes this such a unique track. Tom O'Ryan is in Norfolk at Shadwell Stud, meeting some of the famous residents of Sheikh Hamdans. And Christina McKelleny talks to Nick Smith at Ascot ahead of next week's Shergar Cup. But first, I caught up with Jeremy Martin about Salisbury and his love for this unique track. We've come out onto the Salisbury track. I'm joined by Jeremy Martin, clerk of the course. It's a beautiful day and we're about at the one mile six start, aren't we? And that in itself, Jeremy, goes to explain some of the uniqueness about this track. Absolutely, it's one of the few flat starts which doesn't have uh, starting stalls. And uh, as you say, they line up here, race down the course for, for three and a half furlongs away from the stands and go around the teardrop loop, rejoin the straight at about six and a half and race back up. And actually, where we started on that stand, one of the great things about watching up there is you'll get to see them go straight past you from about the start and then you can see them all coming back up again. That's right, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a feature and a lot of people do gather on this building and, around, and down on the rails here to get a good view of the start as they, as they gallop off. And what about the, the crowds you've had coming in so far? I've been here a couple of times and, it, and it's always seemed pretty busy. We had ladies' night, which was very busy. You've been pleased with what you've been getting coming in through the doors? Yeah, it's been a perfect, perfectly admirable season, I'd say. Um, a couple of the Sundays were a little bit weather affected. Um, but uh, no, we're, we we're well in touch with uh, last year, which was a good year. And in fact, um, the two Saturday July nights that we've, um, that we've just had were combined with the best, uh, it was the best July we've had for 12 years. You can really see, actually, looking down, I don't know if stood here and looked right down the trap but you can see how it drops away mm -hmm. um, there's down the far end there there's there's a bit of a hill for them to come up what well, how would you describe the track and especially this the straight track well this is a downland course i mean isn't it it's it is undulating there is a dip between the the three and the two uh, as you say a gradual uphill climb to the finish um, I mean, it's one of the oldest race courses in the country. There's been racing for over 450 years here, um, up, up here on this hill somewhere. And it's, um, you certainly wouldn't you know, build a race course on a, on, you know, like this now, but it's what makes you know, so many of the British race courses so unique and, uh, and, and stunning in a way that um, they have so many interesting features. And Salisbury is one of them, yeah. I mean, um, we go back to the great eclipse and Jim Crack winning here, you know, once upon a time winning the, winning the, um, the City Bowl that we still stage. Richard Hughes was keen to mention on his last meeting here as a jockey that A, he'll be back as a trainer, which we all know, but also he'll be keen to, as Richard Hannon has done, send his juveniles here because he feels they learn so much and it's a really good place for youngsters. It always has been, yeah. Um, I mean, in the 70s, both Mill Reef and Brigadier Gerard won here. Um, they we're always having very nice two-year-olds winning at Salisbury and it's something we take great pride in, seeing the nice youngsters. This year's been a classic example, actually, our, our first few race meetings this season. We've had three two-year-old winners who have each gone on to success at Group 2 level. I'm talking about Illuminate, who won a Phillies conditions race at our first meeting. Um, I'm talking about Gutefan, a horse of Richard Hannon's and Al Cab, who won a, a maiden here in, in June. He won a Group 2 in France very recently. And um, Galileo Gold, who won here in June a, a maiden auction race, uh, of course, won the, uh, the Group 2 vintage stakes at, at Goodwood. So already three really nice youngsters have won here and gone on to success at Group 2. Excellent stuff. That's it from Jeremy and myself for now. We'll be back later to talk about pattern races and the, the successes in the past we've seen at this Salisbury track. But for now, we're off to Shadwell Stud, where Tom O'Ryan has been visiting some of the residents. It's 30 years ago since Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum created Shadwell. In that time, they've been associated with over 100 Group 1 winners. I've come behind the scenes to meet some of the team, starting off with Richard Lancaster. Richard, you've been here at Shadwell for 30 years. Through the whole sort of evolvement of this, if you like, you must have seen huge changes. Am amazing changes. Uh, when the, the estate was first bought uh, back in 1984, um, it was actually all the other side of the road. The nunnery was not part of, uh, of Shadwell. The land, it was an arable farm that uh, was uh, just lying neighbor, uh, neighboring to the, the Shadwell estate. Shadwell itself at that stage consisted of two studs, uh, Melton Paddocks, 
and Snare Hill. And Group 1 winners are the key to a place like this. We're going to see one now. McAdram's going to come out and parade for us. And, and he was the latest of them last year. Uh, we've had one since, of course. But yeah. McAdram was fantastic last year and he really got his just desserts in the Coral Eclipse. Um, that was a fantastic race. I think he showed everything that uh, the, 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 he, it's the great feature of Mukadram, which is this great sort of fighting spirit. William Haggis always said that uh, he was such a tough individual. You can see now he's let down into a beautiful horse. He's a very, very good looking uh, son of Shamadal. And uh, no, we're delighted. He's been well supported in his first season and uh, we, we've got uh, a number of inquiries, uh, quite a number of inquiries already for, for next year, which is always, uh, always a good sign. You know, people can be inclined to, to go for first season sars and then uh, uh, they somewhat get forgotten about by the new crop. He's but... a great model too, Richard, to my eye as well. He shows himself off very well. He is. I, he's a lovely. I mean, he's a lovely balanced horse. He's uh, good confirmation, plenty of presence, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, standing here, very good looking horse. Lovely temperament too. Richard Nayef has been one of your stalwarts for many years now. Yes, he has, and he, he arrived uh, having had uh, what? I mean, he'd won. Uh, a group one race in uh, what are these three uh, seasons uh, over, over a span of three. So he was a tough racehorse. He arrived here and set off extremely well um, his first season, uh, but uh, then the somewhat tail tailed off, but has now sort of uh, had a bit of a resurgence. Uh, and uh, what with uh, Snow Sky and... Uh, He's been a good advertiser. Yeah, Snow he Sky. has. He's, uh, I mean, I don't even... I think a bit disappointing in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth stakes, but certainly in the Hardwick he looked a really, uh, yes. a, a really on top of his form, whether the going or whatever, uh, what, things didn't go quite right in the King George. Um, Mustajeb, I mean, you know, it, it, so it just goes to show the horse, I mean, people rather sort of write him off as being a sort of middle distance uh, 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 Sar, which he is, and, and he gets good horses, but he can also get a, a horse like Mustajeb, uh, you know, who has who, plenty speed. Uh, lots of speed. I mean, uh, Pat Smullen, you know, uh, was very, very uh, keen that uh, that Dermot uh, should try him over the sprint distances this year, and and and, uh, and it's proved uh, uh, pr proved correct. Um, but uh, no, and, and it was great to see people coming back to support him. But he's a middle distance horse. And this is the trouble that, uh, you know, in, in this country now, uh, the breeders, they're looking for commercial horses. They're looking for, 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 for speed, speed and precocity. And precocity. They, they want to go to the sales. They want, uh, they want to see a quick turnover. Well, and, and the owner breeder is a, is a disappearing breed. Yes. And, uh, uh, and of course, these types of horses are what, uh, you know, you, you really need your own breeder who's going to be patient and, 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 and let the stock have time. And that's why it's great having um, uh, a boss like uh, Sheikh Hamdam, who's sort of prepared to give uh, uh, the, the, the horses the, the time to, to develop and, uh, and reach their full potential. And more from Tom at Shadwell later on, but for now we've come down to, well it's actually the seven furlong start with the, the mile start of the Sovereign Stakes behind us, Jeremy. And actually looking up, you can see that the uphill start is much more pronounced than I thought it was, and you've got that slightly banana-y turn as well. Yeah, absolutely. You've got quite a climb between the, the one mile and the seven furlong, as you can see. And it sort of plateaus out a little bit as we approach the five, but you're always on that slight right-hand turn, yeah, until it sort of straightens up up the last four. What sort of test do you think that provides? Do you think it places an emphasis on the draw at all? <sighs> very small perhaps I mean it has only, don't think it does any harm being drawn against the rail but no it's it's um, you get a lot of horses that are drawn on the outside that still win their races it's windy isn't it it's, it's, I'm quite, it's, it's very does breezy, it tend yeah. to blow straight down the track it like is this? yeah southwesterly is yep coming from uh, uh, most of our uh, weather systems so uh, yeah it tends to blow down the course yeah so a headwind is quite a, a yeah, common qu feature quite do, common. do you think it, it's it's a stiff mile is that a fair way to describe yes, it yes I think you would yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah you've got, it takes a bit of getting yeah looking back to last year Captain Cat where do you think that fit in with, with, with winners what did you make of Captain Cat's win he'd obviously been progressive he'd, he'd won on the all weather and were you pleased to see him win the race yeah he was an admirable winner and he followed it up 
with another Group 3 win in, at uh, Haydock, didn't he, about uh, a few weeks afterwards, and he, he's run well enough in a couple of big races at, at Ascot. But, um, yeah, he's in sort of, uh, in, in, I say, in the middle tier of the winners that we've had. Um, we would have had higher profile winners of our big race as well. And the Sovereign Sex is part of five pattern races you have, and that's something you've seen change in your tenure here. Yeah, when I came here in 2001, we had two listed races, and now 15 years later, yeah, we, we feel we've improved the program. We've, we've got two Group Threes and, and three listed races. So yeah, very very pleased with how, how it's gone, really. And the Sovereign Stakes, if you had to pick one winner in your time or one race that you, you think was the very best, which one would it be? Well, it stands out by a mile. The race in 2004 when, when North Dancer beat Lucky Story, who had been the, the previous season's best two-year-old and making his belated uh, seasonal debut. And the two of them were locked in a battle up the last furlong. And just in behind were the likes of Passing Glance, uh, a previous winner, and Hurricane Allen, another very admirable miler. I mean, the, the average ratings of those four horses, I think it was about 116. And it, it, it makes it one of the best Group 3s, I mean, ever, really, anywhere. I mean, it's, it's a fabulous, uh, it's remained a fabulous uh, rated race, yeah. And you've got your Group 3 for the finish. You've got the Dick Pool, that's over six. At last year's winner, New Providence, she was a juvenile here, winner here, was she, for, for Hugo Palmer? Yeah, well, she won the Dick Pool, which is, which is a two-year-old Phillies uh, Group 3. Last year was its first year as a Group 3. I mean, it, was a, it had been a really, really well-performing listed race for two-year-old Phillies, and BH said, came to us and said, look, you ought to really consider upgrading this to Group 3. Would you like to put forward to do so? And we did, and it was indeed approved by the European Pattern Race Committee, and um, 2014 with its, was its first year as a Group, was, uh, as a group 3, with, and, and 14 declared runners so you know it did really really well. Cathedral Stakes you pick out a winner of that in recent times who, who really sticks in I think in the olden days uh, Avon Bridge probably uh, uh, would, would have been the best winner of that but that's going back a good sort of you know, 12 years or so. Um, we've also got the Up Avon Philly Stakes which is for what, over one mile to the day before um, the Sovereign and that's had some really nice winners um, uh, horses that have gone on to you know to group success um, so yeah they're, they're, our, our, our pattern races are holding their own. I would say our, our, our most interesting day really is the is the meeting in, in early September which um, has uh, the Dick Pool, it has the Lock Song Phillies Handicap, the Persian Punch Condition, condition Stakes, a really good two-year-old Phillies maiden that often throws up some really really nice youngsters. Um, that collectively actually is our most valuable race day of the year as well and um, that is one particular day that we all look forward to and particularly the, the Salisbury regulars and the actual annual badge holders um, this day uh, which is Thursday the 3rd of September this year. Mm, you get you, you get lots of those in throughout the year I've met them they're, they're, they're all clearly love the track and the uniqueness of it and um, it's a lovely day I hope it's like this for the the sovereign stakes coming up thanks very much for your time and good luck with the meeting. That's it from Jeremy and myself here at Salisbury. And now it's the Shergar Cup, not too far away. And Christina McKelleny has been talking to Nick Smith about the unique meeting. Nick Shergar Cup this weekend, how are preparations going? Preparations are going great. We've got some great uh, great uh, jockeys lining up. New, newcomers like Blake Sheen and Victor Chaminot, the, the French jockey who's an ex-jumps jockey or current jumps jockey who's making a name for himself on the flat. So it's going to be a great day. And Emma Jane Wilson uh, scored twice in the day last year. She returns as captain for girls' team. She missed the silver saddle very, very narrowly. And uh, I think you probably want to be with her rather than against her now she's back. Yeah, I mean, now that she's got a lot of track experience, I can't remember, I think this is her third or fourth uh, Dubai Duty Free Shergar Cup. She's a real crowd favourite. She's an absolute top-class rider. You know, she's a sort of a, a, a automatic favourite um, to win at Woodbine every year as a champion jockey. Um, and uh, people really get behind her, especially the, especially the ladies. Uh, Jamie Spencer also returns after seven years. That's right. Well, Jamie and Karen McAvoy are really good friends and they wanted to ride together um, and, uh, and get a bit of rivalry going. So that made a lot of sense to us. That's what the event's all about, having the jockeys buying into it. Um, and of course, they're going to be joined by Blake Shin. So there's two Australians in the, um, in, in the rest of the world team. So a kind of mini Ashes feel. Uh, it's, a, it's our letting our hair down day, if you like, at Ascot. You know, we have the Royal Meeting, which is, of course, formal. Um, the King George, which is pretty intense, and then the Shergar Cup is is a, is a good fun um, in the middle of the big Goodwood and York meetings. People really do let their hair down and have fun, uh, and there's a big concert in the evening with Lulu and Rick Astley and Razorlight and Blue and a few other names, and it's tremendously popular. 
And it's not just competitive with the jockeys, but the horses also because of free entry and good prize money. It's such an incentive to run. Yeah, I guess that's an important point. Uh, the day is almost operating in, in, in two events in, in sync. I mean, there's, there's six £40,000 handicaps, which are very carefully framed to be really competitive in their, in their criteria. Um, because we want to fill the fields and we want to get the two reserves to make sure that uh, F all the jockeys that are riding or, or available have, have mounts. Uh, but equally, they are races in their own rights. Of course, run under the rules of racing. No team tactics are allowed. Um, that's a message that we constantly communicate to the jockeys. The points go into the overall scoring, but the races, once the stall's open, the, the races are regular races uh, and operate in the same way for punters in the betting shops. And just very lightly, give us an idea of how jockeys are allocated to their horse and vice versa. Um, well, there are 10 horses declared for each of the six races at the 48-hour stage. Um, at that stage, winning post bookmakers who are the event bookmakers uh, will, allocate, will determine who is number one and who is number ten, which will basically be the betting, the favourite down to the outsider. Then there's a process by which each jockey riding will get one at the top, one at the bottom and a spread throughout. So no jockey will come from Australia and find himself on uh, five 20 to one shots, shall we say. Everyone is theoretically getting a balanced book of rides. And don't forget, you can see every race of the 2015 Shergar Cup live on Racing UK on the 8th of August. Now, back to Shadwell, not just home to some of the stars of years gone by, but also home to those youngsters who will carry Sheikh Hamdan's colours in the future. Tom O'Ryan got to see where it all begins for the youngsters when they reach pre-training age. Dennis, this is the most fabulous facility with, with everything possible to sort of get horses broken in, rehabilitated, every which way, e everything you need is here. Yeah, it's a fantastic facility. There's been a lot of investment gone, gone into it, which you need to get injured horses back on the track. You need your swimming pools, your treadmills, a very good gallop, good, good indoor schools and lunderings. You need all those things and we're very lucky that we've been provided with it here. Yeah. And just tell us how a place like this works and how many horses would you have here at any given time? I know it'll fluctuate through the year, but at any given time. We average 100 to 120 and in the autumn when we've got all the yearling sales, we would have around about 180. And also a lot of horses are here to ship to Dubai that time of the year as well. And, and the, with the Dubai horses, do they all come here then before they go out to Dubai they, for they the all winter? Come, they all come here to be checked over, Tom, make sure there's no issues with them that would stop them racing over there or having been able to stay there for a couple of seasons. We don't want to send on sound horses out there. So Dennis, this is where Shadwell's youngsters, or at least a lot of them, get their first taste of being a racehorse. That's right, Tom. All the earlings that we buy at Doncaster, Newmarket, book one, book two, come here to be broken, do all the basic education. They'll stay here till Sheikh Hamdam and Angus have done the allocation of them, and then they'll head off to the trainers then. That must be a hectic time. I know they come in in sort of batches from the various sales, but it still must be a very hectic it's time. It's very, very busy. It's a lot breaking, 60, 70, 80 yearlings. We still have all the rehabs going on as well. Um, we do a lot of the breaking ourselves, but we also get Gary Whitterfoot in to help us, which is a big help, so it accelerates the process quite a bit. That is one period of the year. The main thing you do here, however, I would imagine, is the rehabilitation. The rehabilitations all year round, Tom. That is the, every injured horse that Sheikh Hamdam has, especially horses that need a lengthy time off following surgery, come here to do their box rests, 